All right, folks, but you guys, idiot, we are back. My criminal case on Facebook. Let's head on to the next case where King Kong makes an appearance. Ace, the mayor has declared a state of emergency. A giant ape has escaped its cage into the streets of Concordia. The ferocious beast is said to belong to Professor Ernest Picklebrain, a revolutionary scientist who conducted multiple experiments to spur its inexplicable gargantuan growth. Now, now, Madeline, surely the ape cannot be as big as all that. Well, that's where you're wrong. Word has it that the creature is as big as a house, which is why it was presented at the World Exhibition. I'll be honest with you, Ace. I do not feel comfortable around savage animals or biological oddities of any sort. Even plain old horses give me the willies. But you're right. We have a duty to this city. Let's visit the cage the ape was kept in. Hopefully we can find out where it's headed. So, why am I wearing glasses? Um, or sunglasses. One is it's early in the morning. I can wear my glasses underneath it, um, and the glasses underneath it have too much of a reflection to where you can't see my eyes, so it serves two purposes. Alright, so there's the guy. I see the gloves as well. Do you see the camera? Camera? Key? I do see the tin can as well, and a bottle. It is 2.42 in the morning. The missus is asleep. <laughs> Maybe she can come on in the additional investigation, or in um, the reveal. We'll see if she can come in on the reveal. Oh dear God, not only has the beast escaped, but Professor Bicklebrain is dead. Could the gorilla have done this? No, you're right, Ace. Look at the mouth and neck. It looks like the Professor Picklebrain was poisoned, and that means this is murder. Could the kill could his killer have set the gorilla free, hoping the ensuing chaos would throw us off their trail? I have to admit, Ace, the size of the cage, the giant hole in the wall, makes me a bit apprehensive. I did not expect the creature to be this big. But that means it's even more urgent than ever track down the eight before it can do more damage. And that giant key might help us do just that. Retrieving the writing on the tag may give us the name of whoever was in charge of keeping this cage locked. Well, and that's for the blizzing gloves. They could put us on the killer's path. They're not, it's not a minute to lose, Ace. Let's gather a sample. Yep, I do respond to people. Even if I have 20, you know, 30, 50 people on here, I'll try my best to respond to everyone. So which one is going to provide us another location? Oh, I don't have any stars. That's right. So I'm going to go grab some stars, and I'll be right back. So with Pachinga CD, au revoir. Folks, Pachinga CD, we are back. Let's um, head on through this. So we got almost 50 people watching, 44 people. That is great. That's awesome. People are showing up for the, for the live stream. Love it. Ooh, this looks like almost blood. Yeah, it is blood. Good job collecting a sample from the blood sink gloves. The killer left behind these. Let's have Viola take a look at his post haste. I think I totally forgot to use his accent. So it's this. Ace, hey, the message on that key keychain reads, If lost, please return to Willie Conklin. The size of this key makes it clear that it matches the giant gorilla's cage. We must talk to Mr. Conklin right away. We need all the help we can to track that beast down. Then Shakshi? Shakshi? Mr. Conklin, we found your keys to the escaped gorilla cage. You of all people should be able to help us stalk this giant beast. 
Well, indeed, sir, I am Kiki's handler. I feed her, I bathe her, I clip her nails, and hum reinforced lullabies to her whenever she feels homesick. But now that the master's dead and darling Kiki's out there all alone, it just breaks my heart. What's well, going to bring more your, than your heart if we don't stop that gorilla soon? Now, do you have an idea where it's headed? I'm afraid I don't know. I'm just fixing Kiki dinner. A taste of bowl, tasty bowl of fruit, leaves, termites, and caterpillars. When suddenly, bang, I felt a blow to the back of my head. Then I fell to the ground and must have fainted. Then I woke up. The cage door was open. Kiki was gone. And the professor was dead. So you have no idea where the ape could be going. Ace, we cannot dwaddle here any longer. We need to go back to the airship and devise a plan to get hot on that beast's trail. What a to-do, Ace, with a dead body, a giant gorilla on the loose, and talking to Mr. Conklin turned out to be of no use at all. Ace, the giant gorilla has been spotted. It's atop the exhibition tower. Ace, we need to go there. Although I'm completely mystified as to how we can capture such a beast, if it's as colossal as rumor has it. Ace, I've got just the thing. Rope, surely you're not suggesting to kill the poor creature. Oh, certainly not. This gun shoots a tranquilizer die. It's loaded with the drug powerful enough to put three elephants to sleep. Your giant ape doesn't stand a chance. Tally ho, Ace. To the streets we go. Nice. Ace, there the ape is. On the tower. Got it in my sights. We just need to move a little closer. Alright, Roxy, you're, you're, doing, you're doing pretty well. Kiki, I feel like he's been the name of a uh, of a gorilla. Boom. I got it, Ace. It's falling down. With the amount of tranquilizer I just hit it with, this ape will sleep for a few hours. Ace, I cannot believe how surreal, atrociously, impossibly, gigantic this ape is. Thank God Rose knows how to handle things. Well, fortunately no one was hurt. Even the exhibition tower pro proved sturdy enough to survive being a gigantic gorilla's temporary jungle gym. Which, what shall we do with the ape now? Let me handle this. I'll ask around and try to find a lockup with a big enough cage to host our furry beasts. Well, Ace, now that the giant ape has been captured, we can focus on solving Professor Picklebrain's murder. We better take a proper look around the streets. Yes, I agree. Very good, Timothy. That's obviously there. Notebooks new. So we see the bottle map. Good show. Good show. Truly good show. Well, this agenda you found belongs to a certain Catherine Wolf. She's a journalist, isn't she? You work your magic on that law case. And if this wheelbarrow has tickled your fancy, let us have a look through it. We captured a giant ape case. Now it's time to catch a killer. Nice. Catherine Wolf. She appears again. Inside Catherine's Wolf, a gender reads E. Picklebrain, 11 a.m. 
It seems like Ms. Wolf had planned a rendezvous with our victim. Let's talk to her to find out more. Let's do it. Let's look at the wheelbarrow first. Ha. Huh. I wonder how the plush monkey ended up in the wheelbarrow, Ace. But you're right, the tag was signed by our victim, Cornelius. Now picture this, but a hundred times bigger, Ernest. Would this Cornelius by any chance be the mayor of Concordia? And why did our victim give him a stuffed monkey? Or chance the mayor himself could elucidate this matter further. Let's go talk to him, Ace. What's up, Catherine? Hey, Senior Trooper Ace, always a pleasure to meet you, but I'm afraid I'll have to bid you farewell. I have a giant ape to track. Yeah, the, the ape has been taking care of Miss Wolf, so you have all the time in the world to answer our questions now. Oh goodness, you've caught the giant ape already? You must tell me all about it. I need to know every single detail. So when did you catch it, and where is it? Is it alive? When can I see it? Actually, we have a question for you too. It concerns your appointment with the, the defunct Professor Picklebrain. Wait, he's dead? Oh, that's terrible news. I'm afraid I wouldn't be of much help, however. You see, Picklebrain and I never actually met. You could never agree on a date. And now that we... And now we have that covered, I really have to dash. It's lovely talking to you, Senior Race, but I've got pictures of the pictures of the ape to take. Now, there's something about Catherine. Oh, Ace, the hero of the hour. I'm so glad you caught that hellish creature. Thank you, Mayo. All the day's work. That being said, we'd like to talk to you about the ape's creator, the late Professor Picklebrain. Wait, Ernest Picklebrain's dead? Oh, sad any news, though of course I barely knew the man. With all due respect, sir, do you men you barely know of often send you stuffed monkeys? Oh, that. He gave me this stuffed monkey to inform me of his giant ape would be taking part in the world exhibition. You can keep it if you want. Now, if you'll excuse me, I better make sure that the ape won't be causing any more trouble. Good day. It kind of reminds me of a cross between Rachel Priest and, uh... Cross between Rachel Priest and, uh... Michelle. Ace, I know that you have your hands full, so I will be brief. The blood sample you collected from the killer's gloves did match your victim's blood type. But I bear more news. Under close inspection, I found traces of Musa Akumana, otherwise known as banana, mixing with blood. So you're telling us Pickle Brain's killer must have treated themselves to this widely beloved tropical fruit right before staining their hands with murder. As the bard would say, things sweet to taste prove and dis digest and sour. Indeed, and with the ace in the case, the killers won't banana an peel away from landing in prison. Alright, people, let's be happy. What's up, Richard? Ace, please accept my endless gratitude. You're glad to. Corner's heart by sending me a body and a murder weapon this intriguing. I'm glad the Professor's ill fate brought you joy, at least, Richard. Now, what have you found that is worth sharing? First things first, Isaac, there was a bump on Picklebrain's skull. A clear sign he was bashed over the head. But then, the blood around the Professor's mouth and severe rash on his full neck helped me deduce the victim was indeed poison. Bash him over the head first and poison them later? This guy didn't lack motivation. Has the culprit left any clues on the body, Richard? Not per se, but what the killer left in the body, however, is where the excitement begins. Your victim was killed with the venom of the Chernex Chir fleckery, the most lethal jellyfish in the world. A sting results in excruciating pain and a swift death. Oh, so this Chiroflex something is our murder weapon. Yes, your victim wasn't simply stung by the jellyfish, she was forced to swallow it alive. Look what I got out of his throat. This is... I know, it's thrilling. This is rather unconventional murder weapon proves that your killer knows their way around biology. There's one thing that still baffles me, though. Chironux fleckery jellyfish can only survive in the coastal waters of the Indian Ocean, so I wonder how this one made it this far. 
As a practitioner of principles of delayed gratification, Richard, I trust you'll come up with a solution to this conundrum later. For now, knowing, knowing that the killer knows biology is more than enough to get Ace on the killer's path. Days. We don't have giant apes running a muck and Cordian streets every day, that's for sure. Despite the significant amount of damage the city suffered, luckily the crisis was settled and no one was hurt. But we still have a murder on our hands. Professor Pickle Brains, the ape's owner, was found lifeless by the gorilla's cage, poisoned by the world's deadliest jellyfish. Who could be behind this? Who would come when the ape's handler seems harmless enough and affectionate towards both the gorilla and his dead master? Journalist Catherine Rolf appeared a tad callous when reacting to Picklebrain's death and claims not to have met him. As for the mayor, Ace, I've got news. Remember I told you that Churnux Fleckery could only survive in the coastal waters of the Indian Ocean? Well, never mind that. I know where your killer got their jellyfish, and it's right here in Concordia. That's weird. Alright, guys, I will see you guys in a little bit. Some of the cheese. Yeah. Over now.